Shauna Chalk Goldman and Andrea Trabuco Campos met at a party in Stuyvesant Town, in Manhattan, eight years ago. She had just graduated from Connecticut College and was living with roommates in Bushwick, Brooklyn, and he was a senior at New York University. Afterward, she walked him to his dorm, and within minutes he called and left her a message. Soon they began dating, and then living together. For a time, the couple rented in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn, before moving to Italy where Mr. Trabuco Campos grew up, for graduate school. Returning to Carroll Gardens, they found another rental, a charming one-bedroom apartment where they knew most of their neighbors and paid $2,400 a month. But when they married two years ago, the couple resolved to buy an apartment, preferably a sunny two-bedroom co-op in a familiar Brooklyn neighborhood. The kind of place they envisioned, however, turned out to be far beyond their budget of $750,000. We had this fantasy that we would be able to own an apartment like the one we were renting, said Ms. Chuck Goldman, 30, who is from Irvington, NY, in Westchester and is a designer of health care facilities at Ewing Cole. Mr. Trabuco Campos, also 30, is a graphic designer at Pentagram. For us, nesting is important, she added. We didn't want just a launch pad. We wanted a place we could settle into. The apartments they could afford were overly quirky, in the sense of the sink being in the bedroom, Ms. Chuck Goldman said, adding that when they contacted Deborah Bondi, an associate broker at Compass who had helped her sister buy a place, she brought in the reality factor. In the kind of small building they favored, Ms. Bondi said, it's hard to get the kind of light they wanted, unless you're on the top floor. And then it appeared, a two-bedroom unit in Fort Greene, on the fifth, and top, floor of a 20-unit co-op building, priced at $745,000 with maintenance in the mid-dollar 800s. The couple dropped their Sunday plans and rushed to the open house, thinking an early arrival would give them an advantage. They offered the asking price, but the apartment sold quickly to someone else for $782,000. When you get really excited, the fall is that much harder, Mr. Trabuco Campos said. Ms. Bondi urged them to expand their search to the sort of buildings they hadn't initially considered. In Clinton Hill, Brooklyn, they checked out the Clinton Hill Cooperative Apartments, dating to the 1940s, and found a unit they liked on a high floor, with a second bedroom fashioned from a dining area. The asking price was $599,000 with maintenance in the mid-dollar 900s. But they wanted overhead lighting and learned they couldn't add it unless they dropped the already low ceilings. And the layout seemed less than ideal for the placement of floor lamps that became a deal-breaker for us, Ms. Chuck Goldman said. In retrospect, it seems silly. We were trying to find mature reasons why it couldn't work, instead of just saying, now, nah, we don't love it. That apartment later sold for $640,000. They visited another apartment in Clinton Hill, a two-bedroom on the top floor of the nearby Willoughby Walk Co-ops, built around 1958. As they waited for Ms. Bondi to arrive, people smiled and said hello, which they liked. Why was everybody being so nice? Ms. Chuck Goldman said. This was our introduction to the building. The apartment, which was in foreclosure, had great views and big windows. Both bedrooms were sizable, unlike those in the brownstones they admired, which usually included one nursery-size bedroom, Ms. Bondi said. A second bathroom was a bonus as was the balcony. The price was $750,000, 
with maintenance in the $1,100s. The couple planned to make an offer, but on a subsequent visit they noticed a buzz coming from the bathroom vents. It was like being on a prop plane, Mr. Trabuco Campos said. The problem seemed to be the rooftop fans, but while the management company brought in engineers and maintenance workers to fix it, the buzz persisted. The couple decided to move on, and the apartment later sold for the asking price. Soon after, though, another apartment in the same line, with an identical floor plan, came on the market. This one, listed at $715,000, was on a lower floor and in especially bad condition. Each room was painted a different bright color and Ms. Bondi declared it a disaster zone. But it had the same open view and no buzz. Excited to renovate, the couple bought it for $710,000 in midsummer, and then moved in with Ms. Chuck Goldman's parents in Westchester for six months. It was unrealistic for us to continue paying rent and renovate an apartment, Ms. Chuck Goldman said. They commuted to work by train often rising before dawn to meet the contractor at 7a.m. In December, they moved in. Since then, Ms. Chuck Goldman said she has been noticing small flaws, things I didn't think about before, like the awkward placement of a toilet paper holder in one bathroom and a power outlet on the kitchen island. The renovation also caused a leak in the bathroom downstairs a nerve-wracking problem but one easily fixable by removing and replacing several tiles to repair a pipe. By now, Ms. Chuck Goldman and Mr. Trabuco Campos have met many of their neighbors, some of whom have lived in the building for decades, and they converse in the elevator and the hallways. We wanted the charm, warmth, and intimacy of a brownstone, Mr. Trabuco Campos said. And in their large post-war mid-rise, they found it.